Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. with you and also with you let us pray almighty god whom truly to know is everlasting life grant us so perfectly to know your son jesus christ to be the way the truth and the life that we may steadfastly follow in his steps in the way that leads to eternal life through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. 
He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to his chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship me. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. in this way. God sent his only son to the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed that love, 
believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears does not reach perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not have a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please mute your microphone and join me in singing, In Christ There Is No Easter Rest. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. This is the season of gardening frenzy here in New Jersey. The wave of spring blooming perennials is well underway. Dogwood and red buds and lilacs are blooming. 
cool weather vegetables have been planted and many of us are waiting until next weekend to set out our annuals and hanging baskets. Because here in New Jersey, Mother's Day is always the marker, isn't it? You're kind of safe after Mother's Day from all the frost and freeze. The color and the fragrance all around us are surely expressions of God's beauty and creativity. And don't you sometimes wonder if heaven smells like lilacs? I certainly do. With all that backdrop, we hear Jesus' words in this morning's gospel. I am the vine and you are the branches. They are certainly fitting words for a beautiful spring morning. But they are much more than that. They are one of the seven great I am statements in the Gospel of John. Those seven statements that Jesus makes about himself. We heard Jesus say last week, I am the good shepherd, another of those I am statements. All of those are grounded in and carry the echoes of God saying to Moses from the burning bush, I am who I am, the divine name. When Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower, he's using an image that the disciples know well. The people of Israel were often identified in the Hebrew scriptures as being a grapevine grounded in God, fruitful, an expression of God's abundance and care for his people. They were the vine that God tended and nurtured, but also expected fruit from. And the context in which Jesus spoke these words was the Last Supper, which in the Gospel of John goes on for five chapters. You know, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the description of the Last Supper is quite a bit shorter, but in John it goes on for five chapters because Jesus has so much to say to the disciples. And at this point, Judas had already slipped out into the night to betray him. And Jesus continued to give the disciples what they would need to face what was to come. I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. Now we know that pruning an actual grapevine of its weaker branches will make the whole vine stronger and healthier and even more productive. And the metaphor here is that in the life of God's people, in the church, in our personal lives, God prunes out the things that sap our energy, the dead wood, the things that are failing to thrive. But it goes even further than that. Sometimes pruning is about wanting a, wanting a branch to go in one direction rather than another and to have the entire plant take a specific overall shape that an individual branch or plant may not contribute to, to take on a form that is pleasing to us, us who are the gardeners, and good for the plant itself. Now this metaphor can be alarming. No one wants to be pruned. But we need to keep in mind God's purpose God's purpose for each of us and for the church as a whole. And that purpose for us is to reflect God's love and goodness within each one of us and for the church, that main branch on the vine that is Christ, to be filled and shaped by and reflect Christ's life that is growing in us, Christ's life out into the world. When we think about it that way, it makes sense 
that God will want to take a hand in shaping and prodding and pruning us, pruning our attitudes and our beliefs and our actions. If we are going to bear fruit for God, pruning will be required. And to push the metaphor a little further, remember, grapevines don't produce single grapes. Instead, they produce a cluster of fruit, a bunch of grapes that are all connected to one another. Our fruitfulness for God will come as a result of the fruitfulness of all of us together, our connectedness with one another together in Christ. As we move through what we hope will be the ending stages of the COVID pandemic, we will need to continue to be rooted in Christ. However much our faith has sustained us through all these long months of difficulty and dislocation, and I hope it has, I hope your faith has sustained you through all of the ups and downs. However much we have been sustained by that, we will continue to draw our vitality. We will need to continue to draw our vitality from Jesus together as we go through the next interim steps and phases. We can't just flip a switch and snap back to February of 2020. There has been too much that has happened, too many ways that we and our society around us has changed. And I believe that God is calling us to go forward into that change rather than rolling back to 18 months ago. Maybe an example from our secular history can help us here. At the end of World War II, in the midst of all of that celebration and rejoice and relief, everyone wanted to get back to normal life as they remembered it through four long, difficult and dangerous years. And who can blame them? There was so much to be commended in that desire and in the rush to do so, however, there were some overlooked and perhaps unintended consequences. We all know about the Rosie the Riveters and the Code Girls and all the women who stepped up to work in defense production and in military intelligence and in countless local governments and businesses who all gave their best effort and beyond, not just for the war effort, but to keep the home front uh, alive and going. And everybody's effort was so needed. And yet at the end of all of that, all those women were suddenly told that they were no longer needed. Your job is to go home, have babies. That's a good thing. But there was something lost. The men had returned and they would take back those jobs, even if the women wanted to keep working, even if they needed those jobs. That was an unintended consequence. And it took 25 years before we began to address as a society, began to address head on concerns about women in the workplace and in leadership. And it was a huge struggle. I think we lost some ground in the 1940s. And similarly, for four years, African-American troops served honorably and courageously, and yet they returned home to the same Jim Crow attitudes and in some states formal segregation. And in fact, their inability, they, they met with an inability to access their full GI benefits because of policies of redlining and mortgage lending in banking and in insurance. And some of those unfortunately were intended, some of those policies. And that's just to name one example of what those troops met with when they came home. And unfortunately, we continue to live with some of the effects of those attitudes and policies all these years later. You know, not the, the civil rights efforts notwithstanding, some of those policies are still being felt. The dislocation and the disruption of COVID has been its own crisis. 
but the point is similar. We need to take time to examine and to evaluate what we've experienced and what we've learned over this time as a society, as a church, and personally, and all the ways those elements weave together. It would be unwise and a waste to just shut the door behind us and move on, to just try to snap back to where we were before. God has a future for us. And while its roots are in our long past, for us at All Saints here in this wonderful building that we love, but even more so in the roots of who we have been as a community of faith. So while our roots are in the long past, God's future is being shaped by what we have been living through and the ways that God has been present with us and in us all throughout this pandemic. Now, God's future will not come to us on a big banner with flashing lights that says, go this way. But it will become clearer as we talk with one another intentionally, as we discern together what things God might be asking of us, asking of us, All Saints Church, to tend and to water, and what things we might be asked to prune, and what type of fruit God is now looking for us to produce. This is not work for the clergy alone, or for the staff, or the vestry alone, but for all of us together, drawing strength and vitality and wisdom and guidance from Christ who is the vine, from whom our branches take life and vitality. Over the next weeks and months, as we continue to take interim steps, it will be good to have some structured opportunities for conversation and discernment and listening for the ways that God is shaping us for God's future and the next chapter of our life as All Saints Church, the body of Christ here in this place and here in our online congregation. To do that, we need to continue to draw nourishment from God through prayer and scripture, from conversation and community, and increasingly, we hope and pray through the sacraments. Jesus says to you and to me and to all of us together, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Let us pray. God of love, plant us in the soil of your grace. Nurture us with the strength of Christ, the vine of everlasting life. Enlighten us with the wisdom of your spirit, which flows through us today and all days. Abide in us that we may abide in you and live in your love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And now let us give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page six of your service leaflet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. During the silence after each petition, people may add their own prayers. You may add names in the chat on Zoom. Rejoicing in the mighty acts of God who has delivered his people from sin and death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us lift our voices and pray. Risen Lord, 
hear, hear our, our prayer. Let us give thanks to God for the multitude of blessings he showers upon us, for our lives and for those whom we love, for the beauty of this home God has created for us, for our families and our friendships, praying for those in our parish, Michael Murray and Lisa Wright, Lauren and Jack, Melissa and Dave Pagliara, Candy and Glenn Picorio, Joseph and Gabrielle, Cindy Peterson and Greg Tuscar, Henry, Kadane, Kirkett and Elizabeth, and Kathy and Alan Field. Let us give thanks to the God of life. Risen Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the church that it may carry forward the redemptive works of God. For our clergy, Vicki and Sean, our Bishop Carly, and the community of St. John Baptist. For the many lay people who serve the church and serve the world through the church. Praying this week for our finance committee and for those gather here in worship and prayer. Risen Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the newly baptized and for our own local community of the baptized, that the joy of Easter may ever grow within us and that the spirit may guide us all in lives of active faith. Risen Lord, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Let us pray for the nations and peoples of the world, that the powers that oppress and destroy may decline and that justice, peace, and prosperity be lifted up. And for all who work for the common good in our civic community, praying this week for the Long Hill Police Department. Risen Lord, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Let us pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, those who struggle, and who have died, especially the dead and the dying in India, that the hope born of Easter give them peace, acceptance, and renewal, and that through their struggles they may come into closer communion with the God who redeems and restores. We pray this week for all on our parish prayer list, especially Sister Barbara Jean, Bruce, Beverly, Bruce, Chris, Christopher, Karen Cipollini, Diane, Charlotte Davis, Mary Davis, Barbara Erday, Glenn, Kevin, Steve Kowalak, Miriam, John Owen, Joseph, Michelle, Ted Raymond, Edward Roller, Scott Straka, Marcy Teal, Suzanne Traub, Vincent, Phyllis Wallace, Liz, Maureen Woods. We pray also for Betsy in the hospital with meningitis, for Alyssa, whose cancer has spread even while on chemo and radiation. And we pray for the people of Haiti. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please unmute yourself for the passing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Peace. And now, is there anyone who has a birthday or an anniversary in the month of May or some other milestone? If you do, put your, put your name in the chat just so I make sure I've got it. And also, if there's anybody who has a baptismal anniversary in the month of May, um, put that in the chat and say baptism next to it, just so I know. Um, and that would be me as well. <laughs> okay. So let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase, especially Roger and Suzanne. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin, and have raised them to the new life of grace especially Vicki and all others keeping baptismal anniversaries this month. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Continue to give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who has redeemed us, and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of Christ's resurrection. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Please join me, mute your microphone, and join me in singing the concluding hymn, 296, We Know That Christ Is Raised and Dies No More. Thank you. 